I shall now make a statement in my capacity as the President of the Republic of Sierra Leone. Today I speak as a representative of a continent that has long been underrepresented in the decision-making process that shape our world on matters of peace and security. It is now a settled view that the UN Security Council needs reforming. The imperative for this reform is irrefutable. The legacy of colonialism, economic exploitation, and political marginalization has left deep scars on the continent, affecting its development, stability, and influence in international affairs. The UN, the cornerstone of international cooperation, was founded on the principles of equality, justice, and the collective pursuit of peace. Yet, the current structure of the Security Council reflects an outdated world order, an era that fails to recognize Africa's growing importance and contributions. Despite being home to 1.3 billion people and the 53 African countries making 28% of the total membership of the UN, with significant contributions to peacekeeping and conflict resolution, Africa remains grossly underrepresented in this vital organ of the United Nations. As the coordinator of C10, Sierra Leone has spearheaded efforts to amplify Africa's voice on this issue. Africa demands two permanent seats in the UN Security Council and two additional non-permanent seats, bringing the total number of non-permanent seats to five. The African Union will choose the African permanent members. Africa wants the veto abolished. However, if UN member states wish to retain the veto, it must extend it to all new permanent members as a matter of justice. Redressing the historical injustice against Africa is viewed as a priority, and several delegations emphasize that Africa should be treated as a special case. To fully understand the need to address the historical injustice being done to Africa, let me briefly underscore the compelling historical foundations. From the arbitrary partition of Africa during and after the colonial rule, African nations were excluded from key international decisions that affected their future. The lack of sovereignty and political representation during those periods has had lasting effects on Africa's ability to shape global policies and institutions. The legacy of slavery intersects with other forms of historical injustice, including colonialism, imperialism, and exploitation. Africa has long been marginalized. The time for half measures and incremental progress is over. Africa must be heard, and its demands for justice and equity must be met. I give the floor to Her Excellency Linda Thomas Greenfield, permanent representative of the United States and member of President Biden's cabinet. Let me start by thanking you for being here with us today and for your leadership in organizing this critical debate, the first ever in the Security Council. Colleagues, it has been nearly eight decades since the Council first met, and its architects couldn't have imagined then what the world would look like today as we can imagine what it might look like 70 years from now how demographics would shift, what global challenges would emerge, which international powers would rise up. The United States supports permanent representation on the Council for countries from Africa as well as Latin America and the Caribbean. Permanent representation. Since that announcement, I have met with leaders from around the world to hear their perspectives on Security Council reform. And we agree on what the problem is, and we agree on what the goals are. So dialogue is critical. It is the only way to advance an issue that has been stuck for far too long. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you to Sierra Leone for bringing this important subject to this chamber.